for all of God's children. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, may the words spoken this day represent the true meaning of what you would have us learn, what, would, what you would have us know of your recorded word. That offerings are a true gift to you, to honor you for your presence in our lives, to thank you for the many blessings poured out upon us each and every day. Ours is the opportunity to bring before you our first fruits. May they be given this day and always in Christ's holy name. Amen. Jesus was in the temple. There were thousands of people on the temple grounds. Many had come from long distances to be there for a time of the festival. Jesus took a seat there on the steps opposite the treasury, and he just observed the crowd. He saw a lot of the rich people. They came in well-dressed, well-versed, speaking with one another, and all of the people saw them as they went over to the treasury, and at the treasury there were trumpets that came out of the treasury where you would deposit your money. It was a means of security to drop your money into the trumpet, and it slid in behind the treasury wall. People took great pleasure in watching the rich people dump a lot of money into the treasury. Jesus sat there and he watched the scribes walking around in their long flowing robes. Interesting about the scribes, they pay, were not paid by the temple. They had no salaries. The only monies that the scribes received were gratuities given to them by their students. And, of course, there was a poor box at the treasury that people could donate money to to offset some of the expense that the scribes incurred. The scribes were the religious professionals. They were the ones that interpreted God's word. They were the elite of religious circles in the temple. And many of them circumvented the lack of income by using their prestige and their office to gain those things that they wanted to have. They were able to find those banquets that they wanted to attend, and they were able to manipulate getting the best seats, and there they would drink the best wine. They also found a way to weasel widows' property from them. Many had turned from what God intended into what they themselves would become. And it angered Jesus. He pointed it out as he sat there on the steps. And then a woman came into the temple grounds unnoticed by everyone. No one saw her. She was an invisible person living on the fringe of society. She didn't wear fancy clothes. She simply came in and went over to that trumpet and she dropped in two small coins. I, I doubt if it barely made a sound, but it was sufficient for Jesus to call out to his disciples, look, look there, the, the woman, see the woman? She is not giving from her abundance, but in fact, she is giving to God all that she has. She put the money in the trumpet, and immediately she left the temple grounds. We don't know her name. It's not recorded in Scripture. We, we don't know where she went. We, we don't even know if the disciples saw the woman that Jesus was talking about. But we know that the woman still exists in this world. There are some clues that we've been able to put together to identify this woman First of all, she is invisible, unnoticed by many. She's not well-dressed. She is not well-educated. But she has dedicated her life to God. And the second clue is she is able to do extraordinary things with so very little. I had the opportunity to meet this woman, to converse with this woman a number of years ago. 
I was appointed to Ashland, New Hampshire, United Methodist Church. It was my first appointment. The church was 75 miles from where we were living, and I was asked to perform weekend duty only, go up on Saturday, visit with the people, have worship services Sunday, and then I could return home. There's a schism in the church, the district superintendent told me. We've removed the pastor. We have no idea what will be taking place. Just go up, have worship with the people, care for the people, and we'll see where all of this goes. So I agreed to go. First Sunday in the pulpit, there were 456 people in attendance at three worship services. Second Sunday, district superintendent shows up with another district superintendent along with 432 other people attending those three services. The third Sunday, the total attendance for the three services was six people. The superintendent said it wasn't my fault. <laughs> You've heard these stories before, haven't you? <laughs> Five people attended the first service, and they left, went home. I went out and sat on the steps of the church, wondering just what was going to happen, if anything, at the second service. There was no traffic on the road outside that small country church. But there was a man, a young man, somewhere around his late 20s, early 30s, walking down the road. He was unkept. His dress was not sufficient for most churches. Walked down the road, and I figured he was going to the store, something like that in town. Looked down the road, no traffic, looked back up, and now he's crossed over the street, and he's entering the parking lot, and he's walking toward the front steps of the church. He gets within 15 feet of me, and he says, Hey, mister, he says, you having church today? And I said, Yes, yes, we are. And he came up and he sat down next to me and he began me to tell me his story. His mother was a young teenager when she gave birth to him. She abandoned him at birth. But there was a couple in town that took him in and raised him for the first number of years of his life. They weren't church people. But they, they dropped him off at church every Sunday. And it was the church people, he told me, that taught him about Jesus, taught him about the ways of God. Oft times, he said, they would bring me a pair of shoes or a coat or a pair of gloves. Sometimes they even took me home after we had church so I could have a meal with them. And, and then... And then they'd take me back to the place where I was living. But when I became a teenager, my mental problems became a problem for that family. And they told me I would have to live in the mental home in Plymouth, some seven or ten miles up the road. I don't get back to the church much, he said, but every now and then I do come back to visit. And I remember being here a number of years ago. And some of those same people were here. It was a glad homecoming for me. I love those people. And I love this church. And I said, let's go in and have church. I go in, I hand him a bulletin, he sits down in the first seat. He's the only one there. Stopped by the organist and said, we're going to do the full service. Uh, just keep an eye on me and I'll kind of give you a signal as to what we're going to do. So she prayed the prelude and then I stood for the call to worship. And I began reading and I, I noticed very quickly that he didn't read. So I went down to be with him. And we read the call to worship together. And then we sang the opening hymn. 
And then I came back up to the altar area, and, and I read the scripture. I delivered the sermon. <laughs> 